guys, I'm Joan. And I'm Joanita. And you are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to his love to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello there, you're welcome to Hiscoff TV. Um, before we begin with today's discussion, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. And if you have already done so, we thank you very much for your support. So today's lesson, we are going to look at uh, the problems faced by the PNDC government. And the full meaning of PNDC um, is the uh, Provisional National Defense um, council. Uh, before we begin with the discussion, let me give you a brief a background to the PNDC um, government. So earlier on, we looked at, or we have already looked at the problems that the, uh, the overthrow of Dr. Hilary Liman's government. Uh, the PNDC came to overthrow uh, the PNP, uh, of course, that's the People's National Party of um, Liman, and the PNDC was led by Jerry John. Rollins. So after Rollins handed over power to Le Mans in um, 1979, on 24th of September, two years later, Rollins came back to overthrow the democratic elected um, government of um, Le Mans because of uh, some um, reasons, uh, some perceived um, reasons. And we looked at the reasons uh, the other time. So if you have not watched that video why Rollins was, why Le Mans was overthrown, I would include a link in the description or you even search through the SHS3 um, playlist and you surely find it there. So uh, Rollins now overthrown, uh, now uh, uh, toppled the PNP government. Uh, so in 1981, Le Mans was no more and Rollins took over. Now, when Rollins overthrew the uh, PNP government or Le Mans government, it did not come back with the same name as, as previously, you know. Uh, Rollins was the, the party where he came was with the AFRC. Now, they changed that name to the Provisional National Defense Council. And this uh, council uh, stayed in power from 19... 81 to 1993 and that's quite a long time you know over 10 years over a decade uh over 10 years and and so you see when people talk about a rollins initially somebody who said was not in for power uh when he overthrew the smc2 now he's staying on from 1981 to 1993 so really, it looks as if Rollins wanted power. And so he stayed on, you know, it's not as if he didn't want power, he wanted power. But when they took over from Le Mans, there was issues. There were problems that they faced as government and every government faces problems. The current government today, the NPP, is facing a huge, huge, huge problem, which I think is first in its kind, you know, it's very huge. Now you can see how inflation is going, debt restructure, even just to get an IMF deal is now a problem for the government, uh, mainly because of COVID and other factors. Now Rollins equally faced the same problem when he overthrew um, Le Mans, or Le Mans government. So that is what we look at. We will look at um, the problems the problems faced by the PNDC um, government. Good. So let's begin with our objectives. So our ob objective is quite simple. By the, end, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to outline any five problems or outline the problems that confronted the PNDC, that's the Provisional National Defense Council's government. Uh, yeah. So let's begin with the with their discussions. Now, the first problem that the PNDC encountered had to do with counter coup d'etats. Um, counter coup d'etats. Don't forget that the PNDC was never voted for. The PNDC was not a democratic 
um, elected government. Uh, the PNDC came to power through coup. And therefore, they know that <laughs> there will be some soldiers who would also not be um, satisfied. Probably they have been alienated or something of that sort. And so there was counter coup and Rawlings and his men had to deal with these consistent coups for a very long time. All right. Few days after he took office or assumed office, there was a coup. The most important one. Let me, so June 4th, 19, uh, 19, you know, the Le Mans coup took place on June 4th. Uh, no, sorry, 31st uh, December, rather, 1983. And then June, so the following year, June, I mean, of course, 19th June, 1983, uh, Rollins, uh, I mean, of course, Rollins had to deal with a series or, of course, the most serious coup attempt, uh, which involved uh, one of his soldiers by name Captain um, Halidu um, uh, Jiwa. Now, he was part of uh, Rollins. He was an associate, okay? He was an associate of Rollins. He was part of Rollins. And, you know, he had to deal with, with, with this. Now, fortunately, for Captain of course, Halidu, who was not successful in his coup, uh, his coup was fueled uh, by Major Courage Kwashiga. I love this name very much, Major Courage Kashiga. He uh, fueled the coup or prevented the coup. Uh, so in all, the PNDC managed to survive 20 coup attempts. Wow, is that not strange? 20 coup attempts. And that should tell you the power that uh, Rollins welded uh, in the military. You know, for, for, for him to have been able to um, survive 20 coups suggests that there were a lot of people who were very loyal to him in the military. And that even accounted for the reason why he could stay on for a very long time, from 1983 um, uh, to, you know, uh, somewhere in 19, uh, of course, 90 something, 91 there about. So that should tell you how uh, loyal people were to him and they were willing to die for him. Now, the next uh, problem that also confronted the PNC, uh, PNDC's uh, government had to do with the repatriation of illegal Ghanaian immigrants from Nigeria. Now, in 1983, uh, in Rawlings' rule, uh, a particular in the PNDC's era, was very, very difficult. And uh, I would not be wrong to compare what is happening in Ghana today to that of the 1983, even though I was not born at that time. But I feel that it's almost the same. Well, if you agree or disagree, you can share your views on the comment section. You know, the 1983, uh, there was something called famine. There was a famine in the country. Uh, that is hunger, famine in the country. Now, that same time, too, uh, Nigerians were planning on repatriating of about one million or millions of Ghanaians who had gone to Nigeria illegal. You recall we have already indicated that during Le Mans government, there was a, 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 a brain drain where a lot of the a, a lot of the workers, government workers, you know, decided to go to Nigeria to work or to look for greener pastures. So, and some of a lot of these people were illegal. They did not have legal documents, you know, um, backing their stay in Nigeria. And so the Nigerian government in 1983 decided to repatriate all these illegal Ghanaian immigrants back to Nigeria. Now, these immigrants had entered in, for Nigeria illegally. And so the Nigerian government deported all of them, all of them back to where? Ghana. All of them back to Ghana. And one million people, these one million people were all coming back to Ghana. A lot of them, uh, and the government had to... No, bear in mind, some of them even did not have money to come back to Ghana. Uh, and so the government had to find ways and means, the PNDC government had to find ways and means to, to, to bring all these Ghanaians back because they were stranded in Nigeria, to bring all of them back to Ghana. And even after bringing them back, it's not just about bringing them back, but reintegrating them into the society uh, because some of these 
uh, returnees came back and there was no job. Don't forget, already in the country, there was unemployment rate was very high. And so to also receive one million people and to resettle them and give them jobs, that will be a very difficult task for the government. So the PNC government faced a, a whole lot of headache in trying to accept these uh, uh, of course, Ghanaian immigrants and then integrating them into the society. Okay, and don't forget, uh, I mean, while this was happening in 1983, the same there was also unemployment rate um, in the country. So the problem had moved from bad to worse because it started from the PNP. And even with the returning or the uh, even with the return of the Ghanaians that were also repatriated from Nigeria, even made the, the whole issue worse, the unemployment situation. Not even the private sector could even absorb um, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to even absorb some of these people to even find solutions to the issue. And this led to, of course, cases of armed robbery, you know, in some parts of the, in some parts of the country. Okay. In some parts of the country. And so that, that, that was the major challenge that uh, Rawlings and his men had to deal with. Okay. Had to deal with unemployment rate and unemployment has been there since and even today the current government is still struggling with employing the youth whereby they came up with a, a program known as the NAPCO uh, to absorb the youth and to somehow uh, give them some skill but hey ask yourself has that solved anything you know there is still unemployment out there people are jobless out there so with the coming of these one million it made the whole issue worse and Rollins and his PNDC men had to find ways and means to do all the, all this. And that was a problem that they faced. A major problem again, at the same time, um, in 1983, had to do with an acute famine. Okay, acute famine. Now, Ghana was severely hit by a famine. Uh, I don't know if you have heard before. Of course, normally they say it. Of course, normally they say 83, a com. Uh, Ghana was hit by a famine, and this uh, famine was caused by two things. One, it was, ha I mean, it, it had to do with a uh, draft and also widespread of what bush fire. So it was not raining, no rain, so which means there will be draft. Uh, and then because no rain, because bush fires were also uh, rampant, and these bush, uh, bush fires destroyed thousands of hectares of, of productive um, crops in many parts of the country where um, farming was done, especially Wenchi, Adeso, Techiman and Co. And so as a result of this, the government had to spend additional money, you know, uh, to import cheap items or food such as cheap yellow corn to feed the teeming masses that were hungry. So there was hunger, a lot of hunger in the, in the country because there was no um, food because of the drought, no water, as well as the bushfires, which had swept through a lot of people's farm. So the government faced two problems here. One, the immigrants that were coming, already the people in the country are finding it very difficult to even find something to, to eat because of the drought. Unemployment is there. Now another one million people are coming with this acute farming in place. So all these were some of the problems or challenges that confronted the PNDC um, government. And this led to, it was this period, 1983, that this term known as the Rollins chain, I don't know if you have heard it before, a Rollins chain, which refers to uh, the exposure of the, of, the, of the neck bone. You know, when somebody, when there is farming, when when you don't eat well, you realize that your neck bone, the, the, the bone in front of your neck is exposed. You know, it comes out. And that thing was called Rollins chain because a lot of people were having that kind of look. And uh, excuse me to say, if you look at countries like Somalia and Co, you, you can see some of the images that I'm talking about even there. All right. So good. So this was some of the problems that the PNDC 
um, phase. Let's take a look at the next of the problems, and I think this will be the last one, or the last uh, problems faced by the, the PNDC government. Now, there was also the matter of three high court um, charges. Now, during the era of the PNDC, three courts um, charges, high court, not the magistrate court or whatever court, high court charges were made, cold blood made. They were actually abducted and taken from their, their homes. People, military men, you know, went into the homes of these lawyers, captured them, and some of them were bent uh, alive. They were bent uh, under recognition. The following day, you could even, it could be a problem to even see who was there. They were literally taken out from their homes and killed. Now, interestingly, when this happened, this, before that, let me tell you, these are the lawyers. These are the lawyers who were ab abducted and killed. All right. So this woman here was called um, Cecilia Cranton. Okay. This woman was called Cecilia Cranton. Then this man was also called K.A. Ejapon. Of course, lawyer K.A. Ejapon. And then this man was also called Justice F.P. Sarkodie. All right. Now, look at the... This is the Supreme Court. This is the image of the Supreme Court. And uh, their, their statues have been made and they are branded as the martyrs of the rule of law because they died because of their uh, profession. So the images or the statues that you see in front of the Supreme Court refers to these lawyers that were killed under the Rollins um, regime. You see, the, the issue why this became a problem was that, or to the PNDC was that people accused the PNDC of being behind the murder. Now, don't also forget that these three lawyers were not the only ones who were killed. There was also Major uh, Retired uh, Aqua. Uh, he was also a retired general and he was also killed. Now, a lot of people um, f uh, accused the PNDC of being behind the killing of these three murders because you can't just have people being captured and killed. I mean, taken away from their houses and killed just like that, like animals. Now, these lawyers that were killed were also very, very prominent in overturning the arbitrary, of course, decisions of the government. Sometimes they, these lawyers would clash with the government on certain issues. So as the government issues uh, a decree, sometimes these lawyers will overturn that decree. So naturally, people would point fingers to the government uh, for being involved in the, in, the, in the incident. Now, this tragic incident led to the resignation of some members of the, um, some members of the PNDC. And an example, we have Brigadier Nunu of Comensa, who is still alive, and also Reverend Dr. Vincent Kobna uh, Damwa. These people were part of the PNDC. And they resigned from the PNDC because the PNDC was accused. People accused them of being behind the killing. Now, interestingly, from that time up to now, the government and successive government have not been able to find out who did the killing, who ordered them. Of course, military all that we know is that the military did it, but who ordered the military? Who was the arm, uh, who was the army commander at that time? That was who? Uh, that was Terry John Rollins. He was the, the commander-in-chief at that time of the army. So if the army have done something and up till now we don't know who did it, then who did it? And, and that is a question that Ghanaians and families of these uh, innocent um, charges still ask um, the government and nothing has been done. You know, Ghana, we don't value life. When you die, you die. Nothing. Good. So these were some of the problems. Now, they were charged. They were accused of doing it, accused of being behind it. But you dare not say it loud because you could also be uh, killed at that time. So, yeah, these are many more ways some of the problems um, the PNDC um, confronted. So let's take a look at the, the question for us. It says, outline any five um, problems confronted by the PNTC um, government, and this is an object um, question in uh, 
which came in 2016. And I hope you will be able to do that, even if it appears in your WASI exams. Quiet. Good. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for your time and subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye. Um, Bye.